one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I am one of your hosts. But uh, speaking of which, uh, this uh, does this kind of start our holiday tradition, Brandon? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, why don't you tell us what's on uh, for today's uh, um, agenda, since uh, you're going to be tonight's host? Well, tonight we're going to cover a special piece, the 1978 classic Star Wars The uh, Christmas Special. This actually aired only one time. But left such a mark that many people managed to tape it at the time, and despite George Lucas's best efforts, it has still been made available to this day. Still out there traumatizing people, man. <laughs> and actually, they call it the Star Wars Holiday Special. So, mm -hmm. oh well, you know. Either way, I can go. I can go with that. Um, oh, just, yeah. just, just like Walmart uh, uh, tried to cover Christmas on the Christmas uh, horror story. Uh, well, uh, sto uh, story well, we are talking holiday. about Life Day, so it's kind of the Life Day special. Really, well, and also, in it. fairness, the, the movie aired in November 17. It almost yeah. is more of a Thanksgiving than Christmas, in a sense. But True. You could say that. Hmm. So we have uh, an interesting uh, bit to talk about tonight. So because this is as rare an item as it is, <laughs> uh, many of you out there may not have seen this gem. Had to work to say that. Uh, and therefore, there may be a few spoilers. So beware. Of course, if you do not want to be spoiled on this, We'll have this uh, all recorded, so go watch it and come back. By the time you're back, we'll have the whole thing finished, and uh, you can just listen to your heart's content. Of course, with this particular episode, one could say that as soon as you start watching it, you have already been spoiled, uh, because this <laughs> thing is uh, way past its sell-by date. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so as far as plot is concerned, we are uh, talking about Chewbacca trying to get home to his family for Life Day. We mm -hmm. never knew this, but apparently Chewbacca has a wife, a child, and even a grandparent, uh, mm -hmm. or actually parent, uh, sitting there waiting for his return. Mm -hmm. Of course, our focus could have been on the action-packed ride to get him back home to his family, but we were gifted the opportunity to spend that time with Chewbacca's family instead. <laughs> and, a, uh, and a variety show in between, because everybody knows that variety shows are the popular thing mm -hmm. in the late 70s. Um, so with that being said, we'll go around the room and uh, just introduce people here. We have with us, of course, our, our fine host, Dave Streggy, and uh, Kotobuki Jake, hey. and Mosley. Hey, 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 happy to be here. So we got some wonderful people here to discuss a not-so-wonderful product, but still a gem all the same. So why don't we go on to first impressions? So uh, let's start with you, Dave. Uh, is this your first time seeing the Star Wars Holiday Special? Uh, this is was in fact the first time that I had actually fully seen the the Star Wars Special. I've had a copy of it forever since it's been bootlegged forever, um, and, and I just hadn't had a chance to sit down and watch it and uh, having this come up as a discussional topic gives me a perfect excuse to watch a really bad movie so um i guess my first impression is uh i i, I guess uh there's not much difference in females and males in uh the wookie world um 
uh, in looks. I, I kind of feel like the, uh, they look similar in suit as well as sound. <laughs> uh, well, one of them did have the gun belt on. I mean, Chewbacca has his little gun belt. True, on. true. Um, other, uh, so I guess uh, Chewbacca has his chastity belt. So, um, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> but I feel like um, I feel like people would have might have under uh, been more entertained with this film if they're if what the Wookiees were saying during the whole thing uh, whole thing because it ended up being like a three fourths of the movie <laughs> was about the the family of Chewbacca's so um uh I I, I guess um I was entertained uh for, uh, for the most part uh, because. I was familiar with at least Chewbacca and um, heavily make uh, make up Luke Skywalker showed up um, looking like a male figure skater. Uh, <laughs> either that or a male prostitute. Who knows? I'm pretty sure he was wearing eyeliner. And yeah, no, I don't right? know what was going on. Was there. Uh, he looked like, like he he came, uh, came from it came from from a rock star concert or some shit. Like that, <laughs> I, I was going to say he looks like he escaped from the set of a Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but um and uh i guess princess La uh, laid back uh was there um i don't know if you know that reference mad reference um because uh star wars was uh heavily com uh, com uh, comicalized in mad magazine mm -hmm. for quite some time and they they called luke skywalker lube skywalker um han solo hands solo <laughs> of, uh, what, what was his name? Uh, old Professor Jerkoff. Che che chewing, <laughs> che uh, chewing tobacco. Um, well, I was going to say, Chewie already has a, a name that fits that theme, you know? I mean, uh, the uh, the parodies have been there for a while. Oh, I mean, yeah. shoot, the addition that I have of it, and the bootlegs have gotten real fancy <laughs> for me. Uh, was just they had a copy of Hardware Wars with it, which I actually have a special edition version of that. Uh, and in my collection. Of, speaking of parodies, like one of my favorite uh, uh, Mel Brooksisms, uh, I, I have all the more appreciation for it after seeing this film. That was the uh, what is it, Yoga? What do you do here? Merchandising. <laughs> Where the real money from the movie is. <laughs> May the, oh. power, may the power of a Schwartz compel you. Oh, anyway, God. was there lumpy <laughs> dolls that came out after this? <laughs> they, they, they try. I, I think I read. I think it was Hasbro. Maybe well, Mattel <laughs> was going to make a line of toys for Chewie's family, and they, they never got past the prototype stage because no one would have wanted them. <laughs> well, Star Wars. Yeah. Was, Star Wars was such a big franchise. Uh, right. I mean, even the Turks. Have their own version of Star Wars. Right. <laughs> On an excellent version, it is. Um, right. So, you know, why don't we go ahead then, uh, since you, Jake, have been uh, kind of uh, speaking up? Why don't we go with your first impression? Is this the first time you have seen this? It is the first time I have experienced this particular train wreck. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, and actually, uh, I only I approach this from kind of an odd perspective and I, I may have mentioned this on this channel before um, one of these days we'll have to actually do the Star Wars uh, proper uh, movies but um, I am in a weird middle ground there are people who love 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 Star Wars and there are people that just hate it and don't get it and most people gravitate towards one of those poles. I am smack dab in the middle. I appreciate it as a perfectly fun series, but I have never understood the level of slavish devotion that the true fans have for this series. And so for me, watching this was not as soul-crushing as it would be for some people. 
<laughs> but now, there are some so good fun. books in the series. <laughs> I do think that the people who get into the books, mm-hmm. uh, especially the ones that Disney made non-canon, uh, mm-hmm. which I think is why a lot of the fandom is so PO'd, <laughs> is because they spent all this time reading like hundreds <laughs> yes. of books. Mm-hmm. And, then, uh, and then in an instant... All of their voices were silent. Just gone. Characters we <laughs> loved. I mean, I definitely, that's how I came up with Star Wars, was the original trilogy and the EU books. And, well, uh, well, see, my, my reference to Spaceballs is not accidental. I was a fan of that film for years before I ever saw a Star Wars film. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's amazing. My goodness. <laughs> Ludicrous well, speed! <laughs> well, actually, so uh, Mosley, is this your first time watching? Well, uh, not in its maybe in its entirety in one sitting. I've definitely seen clips of all the parts of this at, at various points over the years. Um, I don't know if I'd ever sat down though and actually watched it as a full movie. And I'd say it's a little more enjoyable that way. Hmm. Um. I, you know, I, I have to admit, I did get fairly stoned before I watched it this time. <laughs> I think that added a little <laughs> element of quality to it, you know. Uh, it plays a little better that way. I imagine if I was kicking around in the 70s and it came on and I was in the, the right mood like that, I would have thought it was pretty fucking hilarious. So I might have been a defender of this had I seen it before. Like, no, just trust me. Just Get a good buzz on uh, and check that maybe out. I should have looked to see if there was a drinking game. Well, I'm sure there's probably a few uh, dozen, but you'd have been one of those people with the VCR just sitting on record. I gotta, I gotta tape this stuff. Yeah, it's, this has to. Be. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have had to at the time, but no, I don't. Know. I don't think anybody would have known at the time that the episode would never be played again. No, um, <laughs> and so it's just really the fanatics who loved everything Star Wars, the people mm-hmm. who probably like put it on their calendars and were counting the days away. Those are the people who probably taped it. And those are probably the people that you should feel most sorry for at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. And anyone who was waiting for Hulk or Wonder Woman, you know. That's I, true. They could have been saying those, which were much better, especially the Hulk. That was a darn good series. It I is. can think of at least one individual who would have recorded it for a completely different reason. I mm-hmm. I, I could definitely see seen Deadpool sitting there ready <laughs> and waiting. B. Arthur's in this? Yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> see, now, I am probably one of the few who have seen it in its entirety multiple times. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. My introduction was very weird. Mm-hmm. Actually, it may have been the same introduction that you had, Jake, because we watched Glee together almost <laughs> until the very end. Yeah. And uh, it was one of the Christmas specials. And they kept referencing the Star Wars holiday special over and over again. And these are a bunch of people who are so young, they should have no business having that as a holiday favorite. But over and over, I was like, I have to see this. And of course, the magic of YouTube Hmm. allowed for me to see this. And I, in turn, have watched it every Christmas season since. (laughs) Damn, Uh, dedication. uh, And there is something about it Though I don't really care for it overall, but I am attracted to cheese if it entertain me, entertains me. <laughs> and this particular film has a few good qualities. One mm. vignette in particular, though I like two overall. And, but we will get to those as we get to the plot discussion. <laughs> which I guess would be now. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought, normally I don't do this play for play, and I'm probably not, but this is done as a variety show. So I thought I would hit this on the different shows that were taking place. So what we're going to do is leave the uh, whole surrounding story for the end and go through the different variety acts first. 
Mm. And then we'll come back and talk about how we thought about the overarching story that tied it together. So I guess the very first would have been either the shopkeeper or the dancers. I cannot remember which one came first. I think it was the shopkeeper. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. well, In which case... The shopkeeper, that was our, our Connie. Yes. Our Connie, correct? Yes. Yeah. Does and it's amazing the uh, name power we got for this particular show. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, though, does he really count more as one of a random vignette, or was he He was almost a part of the overreaching plot to a degree? It was kind of a weird half step because it was its own internal skit right. in the shop, but it also introduced a character that was recurrent and important to the overall arcing plot. Right. That's hard right. to say in this particular sense. Introduced them as we watch a stormtrooper shopping, but he's that customer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> the yeah. kind that just uh, that just because he's in that kind of authority is entitled to whatever mm -hmm. he wants. <laughs> Which I would go for that aquarium. aquarium. The aquarium was dope. Yeah. <laughs> actually, that cleaning device that he took was actually pretty cool. <laughs> oh, the uh, the grooming device that did like twenty different things. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was like those late night, uh, those late night infomercial, like uh, the Shinzo Nas or whatever it is, sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like the Bed Bath and Beyond of the Star Wars era. Yeah, well, th <laughs> this was that late night, uh, like late night advertising th uh, thing for Star Wars that should uh, should have ended after sixty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is a sense so... of bewilderment throughout this, where you're like, "Oh shit, this there's like an hour and a half of this," you know. <laughs> when you're watching, like, how did that? How does that happen? Where, where, where's the get? Uh, where's the get to uh, two Star Wars to, uh, toys for forty nine uh, ninety nine and get uh, get two more for uh, for for forty nine ninety nine? And let's keep in mind that this was an hour and a half without the commercials. Right. So imagine watching this live <laughs> and having to sit there for like. Two and a half hours. It's like longer, or at least like two hours. Without a, DVR, without a DVR, which is what we have these days. <laughs> because nothing, nothing improves the TV viewing experience like an extra half hour of commercials. Though so I will say there are exceptions to the rules. No. Like for me, the old Peanuts specials, mm -hmm. it back in the day. Mm -hmm also carried that extra nostalgia of that old Copa vi uh, violating ad campaign <laughs> barrage that you would get yeah. back in those days. I don't know. I was uh, kind of enjoying some of the commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I'm one of those that actually enjoy vintage commercials. But they weren't vintage back in 1978. <laughs> no, they weren't. But uh, but they're vintage now. Actually, so. yeah. When you think about it, this was supposed to be a family friendly prime time viewing, and what do we we had a, a several medication commercials, a lot of uh, like automotive commercials because kids should drive. I mean, that's you know given, especially <laughs> and, well medicated. Um, and then, oh yeah, exactly. And then you had uh, commercials for Dallas, some good kids program there. I was uh, thinking, <laughs> I, I was thinking that this was more of a Jim Henson, uh, 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 Jim, uh, Jim Henson experience, in a sense, because you had all the, uh, you had all the char uh, character uh, characters. Character. It would have been better. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. Uh, it might have been better, but shit. <laughs> they were they were obviously trying to hit all the family uh, together yeah. with. With the, the performances and such, and we'll move over to the first performance, yeah. which was, yeah. this was the, the kind of colorful dancers that were mm -hmm. kind of out on oh, the kind the, of uh, hollow stage. I saw them described as a poor man's Cirque du Soleil. I guess that's a good way to put it. 
<laughs> it's definitely a good moment where like you realize that if, if you're not inebriated but you should be <laughs> this is this is gonna be a lot better martha unlock the fucking liquor cabinet if we're gonna sit there an and a half of this <laughs> I will say it was one of the two scenes. Bring it was the two, one of the two things. It was one of the two times in that particular special I had to wonder if I was high on something. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, it looked like that question. kid was. No. It really, it really did. It, he looked, he looked like he must have been tweaked because he was all oh, lumpy. Yeah, yeah. He was trying to walk on the banister at the beginning, though. He was like a cautionary <laughs> tale about drugs, <laughs> hyperactive, and all kinds of stuff. Sound like a fucking well, Tom Tom or whatever. Well, he, he he he. I guess he was a little bit respectful of that sand ri uh, a rider animal that he uh, enjoyed so much. <laughs> I like yeah. how they could only bother to name one. Like Mala is a is a legit Wookie name. Okay, I could buy that. Yeah. But Lumpy and Itchy, uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the names I, I of don't... endearment. <laughs> yeah, they were <laughs> pet sure. names. I don't know. I I think that Star Wars is a little is a little bit more royal than that. Uh, yeah, they, 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 de they deserved at least a little bit more taste. At some point in the chain of decision making, there, someone was like, oh, shit, "Who cares? The kids are gonna buy the fucking toys anyways. Like, they don't need real names. Lumpy and itchy." <laughs> and then later, I love those names. And then, <laughs> uh, then later, Simpsons borrowed it and uh, was like, "Hey, let's do itchy and scratchy." Okay, let's do it. That's why I was I was sitting there thinking like I wonder how much of that owed itself to this like if they borrowed Itchy from and if so where's Scratchy in this one you know <laughs> I can see well, like speaking. back before it was well known borrowing shit from it because it's so shitty that no one would think to look there you know? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, who would want to acknowledge that they were that the, they had actually well yeah you stole our idea I was like but then you'd have to acknowledge it was your idea. <laughs> Dude, you apparently even fucking like George Lucas and Disney don't want to own the shit because it's one of the few things you can just <laughs> freely upload, I guess, without copyright fears. You know, yeah, Disney does not want anything to do with it. It doesn't have. It's like, what do you mean copyright? We don't own that. <laughs> I wonder if there was like a cool period with it where it was almost people thought it was like a Mandela effect thing like that didn't really exist because you know, there had to have been that period between when people taped it and then when they had the ability to upload it where it was like an urban legend almost or something I think it was for a bit wasn't it yeah <laughs> but then again it's always about never underestimate the fans and uh, and the ability to exchange tapes because I, I remember being in a fandom for Mystery Science Theater 3000, and though it was a regularly airing program, the uh, the tapes circulating, especially the stuff that never aired outside of like a small city, in um, uh, like their their KTMA days, uh, that stuff was circulating all over. It's it's amazing to to see. What uh, what can be found uh, Man, even back so in the days of VHS? Like, I would have lied to people. I'd have lied my ass off to and told them it was great, so that they're like <laughs> oh, for their tapes to come in the mail or whatever the fuck, and they get it, and they pop it in, maybe invite some friends over, and make an event of it, and just expose all of them to that shit. <laughs> so many <laughs> It's like the, it's like the movie The Ring. You know, they watch it. They've got the curse. The only way to get rid of it is to have someone <laughs> watch it. Except make, it's Star Wars special. Make so, a copy of the tape. Pass it on. <laughs> so, so it, it begs the question of: Would uh, is this worse than the Fable Thanksgiving Two would have been? Hmm. Hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> fight, uh, them, them's fighting words. What are you talking about? Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to give the vote. Thanks, killing on that one, man. At least that's intentionally shit. There's a lot of parts of this where it's like we're just dragging this runtime on because people paid us for ads or something. <laughs> like it feels that way about two thirds of the way. Well, yeah. and much of the uh, the journey. 
home for Life Day is yeah. uh, stock footage from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so of course. it's not like it's any new footage of them, uh, uh, except for may maybe the, the few scenes where Han Solo says a few different words. I mean, this is before any of the sequels, so it's kind of just like there's only one thing out right now. Yeah. It's only like Star Wars, that's it. And, uh, uh, and uh, there's really no... Uh, you would kind of expect like kind of a teaser of one of the sequels at least at mm -hmm. this point. It, yeah, be, that would have been cool. Like uh, you get to watch a teaser trailer like at the very well, end if you if you survive long in, enough. <laughs> in, a sense, in a sense, there are a handful of things in this special that are actually legit placing the seeds for future things. This is the first time they officially credited James Earl Jones with Vader's voice. Yeah. Um, and this is this is one that will really get the fanboys up in arms or thrilled, depending on how they look at it, I guess. But it is the first appearance of Boba Fett. So... Yes. Yeah. So there were... And we'll get to that, actually, uh, <laughs> uh, not too long from now. Right. The um, But... First, we, we need to go into the psychedelic again and yes. Itchy's realm with uh, his uh, kind of porno viewer. <laughs> oh, just, there's no way to not interpret that as that. Like, she's uh, still that, saying that, it to him, basically. He's a dirty old man. That, that he got from, as a gift from uh, the shopkeeper. <laughs> need another fucking beer for that one, man. He was a pretty cool shopkeeper. <laughs> I, you know, I'd say that he he was a treat. You know, he knew, I think he knew yes. his customers. <laughs> he and just acting wise, I don't know. There was like some genuinely funny moments with him and the stormtroopers <laughs> later on. Yeah. And he was kind of working a little oh, yeah. bit of grade in this. I think yeah, they should have given him a small role in one of the later films or something. <laughs> hey, you got some good performances in this yeah. particular thing. Yeah. You had some good names in it. It wasn't, yeah. you know. It wasn't lack of people, <laughs> more lack of plot. General, yeah. constructed, <laughs> actual idea. I think this is one of those things that was born out of, let's sell some shit. We got like a right. deli tray, a bunch of cocaine, some leftover props. Like, Merchandising. Let's see what we can do, yeah. Actually, in a sense, yeah. actually, Mo, I think you made the point already, and I do agree a little bit. Like you're saying, like... We, we have this exciting return trip home, so we're watching the people waiting at home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's kind of like the effect I had on Thanksgiving Day, where they had this very, 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 very lopsided football game on this TV, and they were constantly showing updates of a very close game that they weren't actually showing. They kept <laughs> show, they would show the updates of the Alabama Auburn game, and then we go back to this crap game that was almost yeah. a blowout. And it's like, uh, <laughs> why why are you sticking with this game? And that's what they that did with this switch. movie. It's the same thing. <laughs> Dude, yeah, but, it's like um, you want to be watching the better game. They easily could have pieced together a little like hour long special with just Han and Chewie and a few stormtroopers, and mm -hmm. you know, if they had went away from the variety show segments. Right. So, what did you think of that one? That's the first song, really, Which that one? they play. Oh, the uh, part? The, yeah, because it is the first song when they finally get to the performance. I think I slept through that part. I, th I feel like the song was dated a little bit. I mean, as far as there, but then again, music can be timeless in a lot of ways. Uh, so well, for those who actually were awake song? through the song. <laughs> huh? Wasn't that supposed to be kind of a disco-ish one, if I remember correctly? It was a lot slower, though. Oh, maybe. So, it was supposed to have like a dreamy quality to uh, it. It, it yeah. was... It was all right. It I reminded mean, me of, like, I think Dave touched on the Muppets connection there, and it yeah. it was definitely, like, one of those musical sequences from yeah. a Muppets episode where you're like, this probably would have been really cool to our parents in, like, 1978, but <laughs> it's well, just not hitting home with me. I know? guess I guess the most interesting thing in this special for me was, was hearing Princess Leia sing. 
<laughs> well, I'm sure we'll get to that at some point. Yes. That was, uh, <sighs> now, I, I do agree with Jake, though, on one thing. Out of all of the sequences, this one was the most likely to put me to sleep because it had the dulcet, like, just calming tones. Mm -hmm. They played the, they did the, the weird psychedelic colors, which also made me question whether I was high or not. And it just, uh, <laughs> it just, it had that hypnotic, sleepy quality to it. It did. To where, I mean, it took me three times of watching it to remember that that sequence existed. Okay. Um, See, I've had the I've had the ex I've had the advantage of watching this uh, four or five times. So <laughs> you're a strange well, way to call that an advantage. <laughs> it's a little randy too. Else... He's, he's essentially enjoying virtual <laughs> porn right there in the living room, like all yeah. out in the. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I guess hey, he's an old man. I, I guess he's just got that itch, huh? And maybe that's why they call him itchy is because he gets around a little too much or something. <laughs> and it has to do with uh, the particular uh, things that he caught with him. And he's got the space crabs. <laughs> so Scratchy's his wingman, I guess, in the, uh, where they go out uh, clubbing. <laughs> uh, that's the ointment he uses. <laughs> Oh god. At the scratching post. The old At the, the vendor, dude. post. It, oh man. I just had a really horrid idea. <laughs> oh well you didn't know when you actually decided to lead this off with Flesh Gordon that we would be running right into this uh, type of stuff. <laughs> oh, I've been thinking of parallels the whole time. Like when fucking Itchy's done, I'm sure there was a captain, I've got a giant boner part right there. Oh, oh, God. God. Actually, I had up. the uh, I had the opportunity of watching the first Flesh Gordon, mm -hmm. watching the Star Wars holiday special, and then watching the second Flesh Gordon right afterwards. <laughs> wow. oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's so, good in style. So we also had that was um, inclined back then so <laughs> pirated the broadcast and put fucking Flesh Gordon instead of this shit. <laughs> that would have been a funny thing to do for the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> so we also had a sequence where they decided to throw on a curfew. Yes. And uh, that took place at a bar. And I cannot remember the actress's name. B. That Arthur. was the bartender. So, yeah, B. Arthur, thank you. Deadpool would be definitely taping this for yes, that. Yes, he would def He would have loved and, that uh, sequence. <laughs> and you know what, though? I actually consider it one of my two favorite sequences. I yeah, it's a good one. Too. And I did. That, she, it it I, had... I, I liked hmm. the bar sequence as well. Uh, 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 that was... Uh, that was cool. Cool taste. She did a good job playing the no nonsense bartender, mm -hmm. and she and I kind of feel for her because all these people in the bar just don't give two craps about anything. Mm -hmm. And I did kind of I was a little wigged out by the dude that was in love with her, which was uh, one of yeah. Harvey Corman's appearances <laughs> in the film. Um, <laughs> but then and then you had her big musical number. Which it honestly it reminded me a lot of um, this song. Those were the days a little bit. It kind yeah. of had that sort of vibe. It did have that kind of vibe. Uh, you were getting that kind of too, because that's my aunt Judy's favorite like song to sing. I Jerry. love that song. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, I I actually enjoyed that whole sequence for the most part. I, I thought that was interesting. I actually really liked the song. It had a very haunting quality to it. Mm -hmm. It did. <clears throat> it just, you know, as they're closing down, it just is this eerie uh, feeling. And one of the few times that I could look at this and actually understand the oppression that the Empire kind of mm -hmm. enforced when it wasn't campy or just like slapping you in the face. And, uh, I just, I don't know. It's just, that's one of those sequences I really liked. I thought it was well done, well acted. They definitely had their costume budget on top for that freaking scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah, to fit in well, well in like a Star Wars TV series if they were doing a serious one back in the day, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Called good night but not goodbye. <laughs> one of the one of those two one of the two uh in my opinion top sequences. Mm-hmm. And then and we of course had we had the what's up? Then we had the other top sequence because I kind of followed it was the cartoon, I believe. Because then the yeah. the starship thing, uh, the uh, that one was the last, I believe, the last sequence. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there also was the cooking segment, and there were, oh yeah, the cooking segment. That's yeah. also one of those weird ones. Well, actually, yeah, go go ahead and lead us into that, Jacob. <laughs> well, that was another Harvey Corman one, and that was well, he had three different, at least three different ones. There was also a little one where I think he was playing, it was like an instructional tape that the kid was watching. Oh, with the Uh, the automated people or whatever, and he's trying to work the thing. Yeah. So so basically with the cooking one, he was sort of like a four-armed alien Julia Child sort of character. (laughs) And uh, it looked like, to me, it looked like a bad knockoffs SNL sketch, but it was... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It definitely was interesting. It was well, there for the moms kept, that were I like, what is thinking, Star Wars again? I kept thinking, what is Cinderella's stepmother doing on, on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very entertaining when I was drunk with it. So, you know. <laughs> yes. I can see how that would be. I, I think, like I said, it's there for like people's moms, maybe. Maybe someone will, not, maybe someone will remember what this sequence was from, because I can't remember. It was like a cooking segment. It was like, a little sherry. A little more sherry, a little sherry from me. <laughs> then, do you remember what was that from? Would be like someone getting totally drunk on the sherry while they're doing the cooking. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. Uh, actually, though, I could see it on Mary Tyler Moore as well, <laughs> with uh, Betty White's character in that. Or, or the Carol Burnett show. Actually, that that yeah. did occur to me a few minutes ago. You had B. Arthur, but no Betty White. That was a missed opportunity. <laughs> of course, uh, if you think about it, Julia Childs has been quoted as saying that she loves cooking with wine, mm-hmm. and uh, she sometimes uses it in her cooking as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. So, does, does she uh, does she whine about shit as well? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the cooking sequence. Uh, does anybody else have any uh, comments about the cooking sequence? Well, they always, and I feel like it's made multiple references to it throughout all of Star Wars, but they always talk about cooking Bantha, and those things don't look like they'd be fucking good to eat. (laughs) Just need a few hits from your spice weasel, and you go there. (laughs) (laughs) She's using the Bantha wine, right? (laughs) <laughs> yes. And then, well, uh, actually, no, no. Uh, the bantha loin is for those that don't have the uh, big families. But if you have a big appetite, you got to use the rump. Yes. What was that one comment or something like? And I use like a little handful. And, uh, and of course, you know what is a good like a handful for you. Oh, only you know the size of a bite in your face. Yeah. And I'm like, no, well, that's that's some nice precise cooking instructions there. <laughs> well, you gotta think about it. If you're on a syndicated show that's uh, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, broadcasting to all of these different alien races, mm-hmm. it, it's pretty hard to really do a one size fits all uh, approach right there. Right. <laughs> Well, especially when the stuff that, uh, that uh, Mala was trying to cook did not look like what was on television at all. <laughs> I swear to God, she had different shit uh, than, uh, than what she had, even though she was trying to supposedly cook from the show. Yeah, who knows how Wookiees roll, man? Maybe they eat their young, like they, they let only the strongest survive, so is their other kids stumpy or something? They're they just, messed up. Uh, Poor Lumpy. If you're naughty going into fucking <laughs> Life Day, you get to be the, the Life Day feast. If Lumpy is... Well, I, knew she, I knew there was going to be a Krampus in here somewhere. If Lumpy is the one they're pinning the hopes of the survival of their... Uh, Bloodline, <laughs> and they're they're in trouble. 
<laughs> well, he had a few uh, too many wookie wookies, uh, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those sequences well, that, that with was... the wookies, man, like you just think it, those are those moments where you're like, they're serious. Like they're really serious with this. You know, fucking well, anyway, we're, we're sitting well, here with like 15 minutes the, of Wookiee talk. In oh, the well, instructional yeah. video with the Harvey Corman and the instructional video, that was where he came across to me. I know him more than anything else, probably from Blazing Saddles. <laughs> Head <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, and he reminded me more of that character with that sequence than any of the others. Um, but it was still, it was kind of amusing, like doing all the. Uh... <laughs> was he doing, I guess, was he doing the sound effects himself? I can't remember if that's supposed know. to be a skill of his. That How definitely needs like to be, like, desperately needs to be yeah. chopped up to some techno music, though, all those mm -hmm. movements that he's doing during that. Right. That was. But that, of course leads to the cartoon segment yes and that is by far my favorite one i mean you had the animation style that we're kind of familiar with if you're thinking about things like heavy metal yeah uh, or, or wizards actually for that matter yeah. wizards and heavy metal were like or, or the original lion of the lion the witch and the wardrobe type of uh um animation uh, i was reminded of that in the animation quality it's the closest we ever get to action really uh full-on action other than like little bits of recycled stuff uh for the entirety of it it's a it's a legit star wars story uh, well, it's a legit and, story but uh, but did they really have to uh, make chewbacca look more like heathcliff yeah. Again, it's the style of but, anime. But, but, let, let's take a note here. Let's take a minute here and take note. So we have an animated sequence featuring uh, space type stuff, uh, dinosaurs, people in costume, uh, big fuzzy animal, you know, furry characters. Obviously, it's aimed solely at children and could not possibly be aimed at any other audience. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Although, I would put the stoned and the shroomed in with the audience. So. Oh, yeah. There's some strange physicality to the to the characters it in it. It's very strange. And I, I have to say, I don't uh -huh. like this style of animation at well. all. But Again, it's, it's, a little it's bit that style of the time. Yeah, yeah, if you if you if you fucked with Heavy Metal magazine or saw the animated feature of that, if you think Han Solo, if you think if you think Han Solo looks like uh, Leonard Nimoy, uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> he did. I, I I read someone like wrote they, they look like someone ran over his face with a truck, but you know, I think uh, <laughs> Leonard Nimoy is and, an interesting. Uh, a little bit. And also, this was the uh, first appearance of uh, a Boba Fett. Opportunity for someone to ask him why the long face. That was that. Uh, that was the uh, th that was the only character in there that I actually thought they they really got spot on. Hmm. Uh, Boba <laughs> Fett. Han Solo? No, no, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Boba Fett. Boba Fett. But okay. you know, considering that Boba Fett had like next to, I always used to think to myself. He is a cool looking character, but why everybody was focused on him because he had like one line in the second movie and then showed he was a worthless, uh, hey. useless, non skilled hey. person in the third movie got, because all he, he does. That got fucking hit from the back, man. I'm like... <laughs> so they kind of make him look stupid in those two movies. They redeem him but, a lot in the EU books. Uh, that's all I can say. They in do. The of Boba they may Gun have been Adam punishing them for this movie. But yeah, actually, maybe. though, this movie, I mean, this one right here, though, it showed that he was a cool character concept. Uh, I mean, anybody could tell it was a cool character concept because of the design. A lot of work came into that design. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But it's, it's really sad that we never really got to see how awesome it was until really The Mandalorian. Because and Jango Fett was, you know, mm, and Jango yeah. Fett was smoked right away too. Basically, I mean, he has like one little yeah. battle, kind of, with Obi Wan, and then mm -hmm. Mace Windu chops but, his uh, head off. 
But, you know, as far as things go with him, uh, Boba Fett was uh, really cool at the time, showing that he had uh, been working with Darth Vader, but actually showing he had his plan and yeah. how to do it. So He's smart enough to be a little crafty and conniving and kind of get in there and make him so, think maybe he's friendly. To me, I could see why a lot of people might have been into him, especially if they saw this. <laughs> because, I mean, he was pretty cool in this. He was definitely the coolest thing in the animated short. Uh, and still, I mean, like I say, I, I mean, there was one positive, major positive to come out of this particular And And also let's special. note, the animation sequence... What is that? Like fifty minutes into the movie, an hour in, something. Oh like yeah, you gotta you gotta sit through a lot to get to. It. <laughs> well, I was gonna say by this point, anyone who was watching it, as we were saying properly, was probably appropriately drunk or stoned enough that the animation probably seemed a whole lot cooler than it really was. I can vouch. So, so that's probably <laughs> part of it. <laughs> I would almost be willing to bet that that animation style was made on purpose to appeal to that particular crowd. Could, yeah, it's <laughs> very much heavy metal. I mean, it would appeal to me regardless because of like, my fandom of that, mm. that shit, you know? But uh, anybody else, yeah, I would I would assume that they would have been to a good point. They, they'd be feeling no pain by the time Boba Fett's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I believe we animation before action. the Clone Wars. Yeah, I believe yeah. we actually did uh, cover uh, could you heavy imagine metal though, on like, this show. I wonder. No, they would. They they did say up front there was an animated sequence, didn't they? Yes. Okay, because I was going to say if you missed that announcement and you were getting high and you were watching this and suddenly everything was animated, yeah. we're gonna... yeah. well, we we crossed into another level here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Traveling through another dimension, dimension of Star Wars sights and time. <laughs> So actually, though, Dave, did we cover? We covered heavy metal on this show, didn't we? We did. We just didn't cover heavy metal too. Well, there you well, go. They right. had Rod Serling <laughs> doing the uh, announcement for this show. That would have so, been so. I guess we can move on to the one uh, to the last music video of this particular, or really the only music video, which was the uh, Jefferson Starship yeah. sequence. <laughs> now, for those of you who are fans of Jefferson Starship, mm -hmm. this would probably be a really cool thing, albeit out of place, mm -hmm. though maybe in place because they did have the word Starship in their title. That's probably why uh, they were. <laughs> maybe had a tour kicking off soon so they could get a little revenue from helping them sell tickets. Well, you know. Notable. I know the. What's I that? know the f first time I watched this, I was drunk. I had to have been because I remembered it as instead of the members of Jefferson Starship, it was Darth Vader thrashing on the guitar and uh, singing into that pink vibrator. Now, okay. it, is, it is notable. It is notable that this video, this sequence, featured Marty Balin, who was the co-founder and one of the lead singers in Jefferson Airplane and Jefferson Starship. And this was his last appearance with them I wonder uh, why. until God. 93. <laughs> this had is why. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm going to head out. That's pretty much what can happen there. Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> uh, not, not a bad little fucking respite from this, the, the random insanity that is this whole special though really oh, like you get a good moment to rock out and you're like okay I'm back in the 70s again <laughs> so we can blame so we can blame the the movie for a 15 year uh, absence of the lead singer of this band from the <laughs> stage honestly that seems like a fair response too. You know, I might have been like I need a decade or so guys <laughs> well you know George Lucas actually considered Taking the plot line and making it into a movie. Yes. Instead. Now, w imagine going to theaters to see this. <laughs> oh, man. There would have been people riding. It would have been Order 66 in the fucking streets if people had seen that shit in the theaters. It, 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 it would have been, it it would have been, been Ghostbusters it, experience. If it had been done that way, 
it probably wouldn't have been much worse than the Phantom Menace. If Actually, you know, it probably wouldn't have had the variety segments. No, probably. And they probably would have dropped some of the holiday aspect of it. Yeah. And I would hope it went for just a story to get Chewie back home to his family for whatever reason. But It, it would probably have been more similar to those Ewok uh I was just going to say, yeah. like, if you had to look for... See, because I love the fucking Ewok movies. I know there's people that hate on them, but they're actually not bad, especially oh. that first one. And I got nothing against it. Oh, Dude, yeah, that second was one awful. was rather dark. <laughs> it was. Um, Killing all these people trip. off and all that stuff, yeah. yeah it's it's, it's definitely a worthy spinoff, I would say, for the time period to what we had of Star Wars. You know? mm -hmm. So the plot that ties it all together is, of course, this family is waiting for Chewie and, mm -hmm. ha and <laughs> Han to return. And during this time, the Empire actually comes in and stalks out their house. Mm -hmm. But thanks to the efforts of the fearless shopkeeper, mm -hmm. we are able to uh, we were able to come out on top and then celebrate Life Day proper mm -hmm. with, uh, of course, allowing Chewbacca to be with his family, but then not be with his family because everybody came back together at the end. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and it, it should also note that along the way, we did get that scene of uh, Mark Hamill uh, that, that oh, we yeah. had mentioned before. And there was one of Leia, uh, 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 Carrie Fisher, but I cannot for the life of me remember that scene. I know there was a brief one. I just remember her oh, singing God. at Hold the on. end of it. Yes. Oh, there, there, is was with her there, earlier. there is part with her in the fucking animated sequence, but I feel like yeah. there was a scene with her earlier in the movie. But there was a part there, earlier. There, where... there is. Uh, she wants to talk to Han so uh, Solo. Uh, and she weirdly to refers Han. to him as Han Solo, which they'd be familiar enough at that point. She's just going to say Han, which was a bit oh, goofy. Okay. Yeah. That she is was talking in code with the shopkeep, wasn't she? Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then the but, uh, uh, the Hamill part, I yeah. had read he had apparently uh, had a major uh, injury and had some oh, yeah. reconstructive surgery, and that's why he had to reconstruct his whole hairdo. He like, really <laughs> did look like he was just oh, way yeah. poorly made up. But, he uh, had one heck of an injury at that time. I mean, yeah. they were worried about actually doing the next movie because yeah. of it. But um, that scene is notable. It is faithful to the canon because if you remember, what well, I never much cared for <coughs> Luke Skywalker. That's one of the reasons I never got into the series as much as everyone else did. And partly it's because in the first movie, Mark Hamill's a whiny ass little. <laughs> you know, he, really is. He, he does grow as the series goes on, but you know, but one of the things he does consistently that kind of annoyed me is he is a straight up dick to the droids, to both R2 and yeah. Creepio. Speaking and in this of being a dick to the droids, did anyone notice how fucking R2D2 wasn't even credited as a human being? Right. Everyone well, else got proper was. credit. And he's credited as R2-D2 as R2-D2. Well, apparently the guy yeah. that moved him around in the movies wasn't actually in the special. But, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it does seem kind of like that, doesn't it? But, you know, that whole sequence, it's like R2's trying to get Hamill, uh, to get Luke back, you know, focused. He's trying to talk to Chewie's family. And R.T. keeps you know, probably, you know, cursing him like he does because everyone knows everything R.T. does is cursing. Um, and uh, Luke's just like, R.T., just, no, you know, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. He's starting, you know. It just totally <laughs> dismisses Some crazy him. engine reactor that's about to yes. blow up or something. Yes. Yeah. So well, what you don't know is that R.T. actually talks in perfect English. It's just mm -hmm. they're bleeping out all the curses. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> exactly. And you know what? As much as they put into the production of a lot of this, which isn't obviously on par with the movies, but there is moments where things look pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. Luke is wearing like a probably bought it wherever the hell you bought your 
Halloween costumes back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Like flight suit. It just looks horrible. Like it's yeah. as bad as yeah. his makeup and his hair. <laughs> eagle, eagle red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, one thing I thought of, and it bothered me every single time, mm. from the first time to this time. Okay, Han risks his ass and everything to get Chewie back. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as he gets back, he's like, okay, well, I guess I can't stay here because this is your time. Mm -hmm. I got to go. It's like, come on, dude. You got you, you brought him there. You're pretty much second to family. You should, like, spend life day with them. Well, uh, I mean, I'm sure by this point... <laughs> I'm sure by this point, uh, um, Harrison Ford knew the production aspects of this television series. Yeah. So he was uh, like, I I'm only going to stay here as long as I have to. I, can, <laughs> I was going to say, you can read that as actually the subtext there is, uh, I've put as much time into this little shit as my contract demands. I have one more scene that I have to do because it says I have to do it, but I'm not going to be here until then. <laughs> yeah, on the on the YouTube version of it that I watched, someone in the comments pointed out that the main motivation for the actors was contractual obligation, yeah. and I think that that's... Oh, yes, it was. Harrison Ford in particular looks like they dragged him there. He, he literally has a look on his face sometimes right. where he's like, what the shit is this that we're doing? You know, right. why not be yeah. seeing different things yeah. on the set? <laughs> yeah, they, had all, they had all at one point cited that it was in their contract that they had to be there. Uh, See, so. Hamill puts a little bit of spirit into it. You know, like he kind of, he comes across as, yeah, this is stupid, but yeah, whatever, I'm getting paid. You know, it's <laughs> and and from what I've seen, like I watched that little uh, comment, uh, the uh, con footage on that tape, and yeah, that's why he came across there. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, he was just joking about it, like yeah, whatever. It's it it's a thing. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> some of the others though. I'd be curious to see the Variety Act's opinions on it, like what they actually. Uh, Oh, I'd have been curious about B. Arthur's reaction yes. on it. Uh, I mean, like I say, I thought she had one of the better songs, so maybe she was like, well, I tried to bring this up to my level, but... Uh, <laughs> well, what's his name? That uh, The Carney dude? Art, is Art, Art Carney? Carney? Yeah, I think that, to see, to them, they might have been fairly unaware still at this point of what really Star Wars even was. You know? Like, it was popular as shit. Yeah. Sure, but it was still pre like Empire when it became mm -hmm. massively huge as it got later on. So I'm sure they were aware of it being that space thing that the kids mm -hmm. are all crazy for, but I don't know that they exactly and knew what they were getting into. Unfortunately, it appears that Art Carney lived just long enough to see the series fall down into the depths again. Because he died in 03. <laughs> so he, yeah. <laughs> might have, what was that, uh, Attack of the Clones? Or would that have been... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. B. Arthur did die. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Once again, into oh. the abyss. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so oh, we, won't have a, we won't have an opportunity to see her and Betty White discussing the holiday special. And that of course, it's cool. tied up at the very end by that song. And uh, I liked how they had the interview with Carrie Fisher, and she she yeah. sang the first few bars of the song. I was like, that's mm -hmm. all I can remember. <laughs> Maybe we'll have hopes of them redoing uh, a Star Wars special with the new characters. Who knows? Oh, See, I couldn't Lord. help but sit there and think the whole time, too, that, like, you got to imagine not all Wookiees understand English. And then they have a totally yeah. different way of speaking, so I'm sure that just sounded like ass to all of them, you know. <laughs> but they were just too nice to say, like, get that bitch off the stage. What is this here? To ruin well, our holiday I celebration. Could, I could have seen like them putting like subtitles in where where, uh, where the Wookiees were speaking, so that at least we could. Oh, have that would have vastly improved it or made it worse. But yeah. either way, it would have added entertainment value. 
Yeah. They treated it like they did with the movies, like with other people understanding what they're saying, but us not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that works with a human character on screen to respond to the Wookiees, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just them, it's like grating as shit. It's yeah, they, kind of start, they should have done it at the beginning where when they had nobody else on screen. Hmm. But with that being said, I really don't think we have any character that we left out. But are there characters that we feel we needed to discuss that we did not discuss when doing the plot? Oh, I, I, t- really? I take that as a no. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I guess I kind of enjoyed the the uh, the st- uh, storm trooper section because uh, he uh, that one commander dude he kind of had some humor with the whole situation. Um, uh, w- when he came in and started lo- uh, looking in uh, Lumpy's room. Oh, and then he's like, clean your room or whatever that part was. <laughs> and he says things that no human says in just a normal hat. Like, check the upper section. Like, who wouldn't just say, could you clear up the, the second floor or something, you know? <laughs> well, and he's, and he's like, and somehow, could you keep that kid quiet? Yeah, he said what we were all thinking, if we're being honest with that. <laughs> Anybody yeah, who doesn't kind of a... hope Lumpy falls off the fucking banister at the beginning is just kidding themselves. It wouldn't have bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> they had a funny or die sketch, which uh, had like uh, the second special, uh, as uh, as it uh, as it refers to the uh, new movies, right before those came out, and uh, it involved instead of like uh, the Wookies, it was the droids. <laughs> And of course, the uh, the new droid was uh, supposed to be like the droid that won everybody over and uh, and made the holiday bright again, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was supposed to be because it was so cute that it would win all of the empire over or the new order over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, isn't uh, is Thisby one of the two? Elves that come after uh, in Ernest Saves Christmas, one of the two. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> no, I will be watching that this season. But well, they not to it no, if I don't get to it. It's, it's, she's played by Patty Maloney, who's the one that played Lumpy, apparently. Uh, oh, yeah. Hmm. So I need to. Hmm? You remind me, I need to watch my Ron Mo one half uh, uh, Christmas OVA. True. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of potential Christmas. Christmas episodes. I think I need to but, watch them. Uh, there's a I lot need... of Christmas episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, uh, I need to pull out my Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol <laughs> for this year. Oh, I've already got that pulled out. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you need a good slice of fucking terrible, you need to watch that Ninja Turtles Christmas video. I think they call it the Ninja Rap or something. With the- oh, God. Oh, oh <laughs> wow. One of the people in the cast has my birthday. Right? He's 60 years older than me and apparently still alive. <laughs> That's good. That's good. With his shame. Wow. wow! This thing came out a year before I was born, so mm. so I was not around for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, well, with that, let's move on to special effects. Uh, we talked <laughs> a little bit about it, and, and I think the answer is special effects were good. And bad at the same time. They were just all across the board. <laughs> yeah, I would have to say so. Because, uh, I mean, the first special effects that you actually see, is, is see uh, are the fucking green screen, uh, screened areas around the, uh, the, the Wookiee tree station. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you, you know, the 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 elevation that they were at uh, so that you, you could see what kind of a height they were at. Um, 
as far it's as it's only the, a model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but shit. I mean, uh, we're in the Berenstein's clubhouse, so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a. It wasn't but, the most convincing during that, but I did like that it gave you a sense of how high those Wookiee... Yeah. Well, are, you know. Was this the first different. time we got to see them, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, the only yeah. real memory I have outside of this of like a detailed description of the Wookiee homeworld or anything like that is in the first trilogy of EU books, and that's infinitely more enjoyable than this. I wouldn't mm. mind uh, a Star Wars mo a movie that uh, that kind of centered around the planet of the Wookiees, in, in a sense. It, There's it's, been some good times on Kashyyyk in the books, man. They definitely <laughs> have missed an opportunity of adapting those into live action at some point. I mean, you got to think. There's a reason that animals like Wookiees would build their houses so high up, you know. Well, Predators there's, down there and stuff. There, there's still money in that Disney cow, so, uh, so uh, there, there's still time for them to screw up some more. So the return of Lumpy and Itchy. Oh, God. <laughs> Hell no. It's uh, the Lumpy and Itchy show. I mean, I, I suppose actually, be be better uh, uh, than the story of him and Solo, uh, where, uh, where he's just the beast. Still haven't seen that movie. <laughs> It was okay as far as heist movies go. So if you just yeah. uh, leave out the fact that it's a Star Wars movie and you just look at it as a sci-fi heist movie, it's actually pretty good. Um, <laughs> though, uh, with that being said, I do think that, I mean, I come back to the bar scene, but I really felt like that was where they spent most of their budget when it came to uh, props and costumes and everything like that. They had all the aliens and everything like that. Nah, they they just uh, they just kind of somehow digitalized most of the uh, characters <laughs> uh, from the bar scene when when we, in the first film because most of those dudes were there. Even that mm -hmm. fucking dude, uh, dude, uh, dude that whine, uh, that uh, whiny Luke Skywalker uh, ended up, uh, well. up uh, having an argument with. I could see them taking the costumes and repurposing them, mm -hmm. but I really don't think it was within their technology to do the uh, digitalization. Not not in 1978, anyway. Maybe not. Mm. Yeah, Although I thought that scene was probably the best, technically, of you know, as far as matching up to the aesthetic of Star Wars and. Mm -hmm. and, you know, having all the bells and whistles, I guess, costume-wise. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about the quality of animation and the other. What about the Jefferson Starship uh, sequence? You know, mm -hmm. That's got some cool bells and whistles there. It's interesting. It doesn't seem to fit at all, but it's interesting. It's a good song. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess uh, could... Good. <laughs> Well, since we since we're talking about music, why not uh, go ahead? We've had several songs, including the one that Princess Leia sings at the end, um, that even she can't remember. Uh, in time, well, at the time she was last asked about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I think that they all work. I guess as little breaks from the main Wookiee shit, which I think if you didn't have would absolutely drive you insane just watching it. I think that in some ways, like it is terrible, but it's also as a whole like a cool sign of the time, like of a variety well, holiday special type this thing. Is, this is notable. The original director was David Acoma. He left just a few days into shooting of the, of the special. <laughs> But he apparently <laughs> directed the numbers by B. Arthur and Steph Jefferson Starship, and he got the ball rolling on the animated sequence. So <clears throat> apparently he is partially responsible for the better th parts of this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about what it would have been like if he'd stayed around. <laughs> yeah, it might have been worthwhile. I mean, like I said, it's not a... 
I don't consider the thing a total loss for watching, actually. I, I do believe that it has a lot of positive qualities. It's, uh, the problem is the positive qualities are vastly outnumbered by the negative qualities. <laughs> I mean, I'd go as far as to say if you're a fan of Star Wars, you should see it at least once. You know? Yeah, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, don't do like I do and watch it every year. <laughs> Bruce Villange has admitted that he was using cocaine heavily while we're helping to write it. I love that. <laughs> I knew it. I knew there was like a deli tray and coke involved somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, and of course they watched Scarface right afterwards. Do well, you know, there's the always someone snowman? on like shit shows like this that's like, I don't care what you have me do, just make sure there's a rad deli tray and I'll show up for work, you know? I gotta admit, that is one of my favorite memes now. The Tony Montana, the big piles of white. Did you uh, like <laughs> <the> snowman? <laughs> I didn't know so, you wanted a, 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 a vignette to Jack Frost. Uh -huh. uh. <laughs> so before we uh, go on to our end uh, introductions, is there anything else anybody wanted to say about this particular thing? Well, there's a couple thing. of things. Well, one, one that's interesting is San Don, I guess, is the character that uh, Art Carney plays. This is, he was an early incarnation of Lando Calrissian. In early drafts of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, Lucas describes him as a gambler who runs a general store, a, quote, guy who trades with the Indians. So it's like, hmm. That's very interesting. Oh, and, I guess the Indians are the Wookiees. So. Well, no, I think they were. Well, I guess, <laughs> I think so, Yeah. Because he, he, he kept going on about, well, I just wanted to show you the things the Wookiees lo uh, love to right. uh, uh, come in and buy. <laughs> and then I like this little one. According to Carrie Fisher, George Lucas gave her a copy of the special as a gift for the DVD commentary for uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. She claimed that she played it at parties when she wanted her guests to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's another aspect. Uh, did we entirely touch on George Lucas's reaction to <laughs> yeah. the, the, this ho uh, the holiday special? Um, yes. Well, if he could, he, he has said that he would track down every copy yes. and destroy it. There's actually a skit on the 40th anniversary right. copy that we have where uh, they got a guy dressed as George Lucas going around buying up copies and breaking them right. <laughs> at a con. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. And, and, and it was kind of wasteful, but it's also fun. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, he tried. He, he must have given up at some point. But It goes without saying, folks, that this is not available with your Disney Plus subscription. So. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, mm. hey, the monkey's out of the bottle, man. <laughs> uh, well, there is an official release of the uh, animated portion. So, that's dope. Hmm? That's, uh, I said that's dope. Yeah. There so is there, an official release? There is an official release, and I think I might actually have it. It's a specific blu-ray set that contain it's called the complete saga and i believe it's the set that i have i, I need to look and see but it's 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 a uh, an easter egg on that set so they have apparently formalized that as a acceptable program <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is a good setup for the uh, for a between mission uh, yeah. to show stuff going on between A New Hope and Empire. Right. Well, I'd like I said, I'd go as far as to say is looking at it as a sign of the times, you know, from the old school sort of variety show telethon days and holiday specials and whatnot, and then just being like a, mar a interesting marketing oddity. Mm -hmm. for star wars as a whole it's it's worth being preserved and like i said you know if you're a fan of star wars or just 
old campy crap, it's worth seeing at least once. I could do see I have it. The, the strength to go through it every year like you do, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see it like if it was re uh, remastered, enhanced, and then have all the uh, <laughs> maybe have all the the old commercials as like bonus features or something like that, you know. Uh, now, I will I, I will say that the version that that I have and you can actually also comment, Jake, because you actually have seen it. Well, was my, actually pretty clear comparatively. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the last couple I watched on YouTube was kind of, you know, kind of crappy, but this one, I mean, it was very clear. The visual and, quality is pretty good for what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, considering that the only way you could get it was by uh, off of somebody who taped it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, at the premiere for Star Wars The Force Awakens, Harrison Ford was asked how he'd feel about reprising his role as Han Solo for another potential Star Wars holiday special, to which he replied, <laughs> I'd kill myself. Seeing <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's such, such a fun little nugget of shit in the fucking the saga of Star Wars. <laughs> it needs to exist, you know? Right. Oh yeah, uh, I think we are better off for having it exist. Mm-hmm. And keep in mind, as far as all the talk about it's the times, keep in mind it was also hated at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh so, yeah, I can understand. I can well, understand. of course, the, the hardcore fanboys, uh, mm-hmm. and w- which is a total different saga. I don't know, man. I mean, I consider myself like not a fanboy. I'm definitely a fan of Star Wars, but my buddy Curl is definitely what you would consider a fanboy, and even he fucking someone who would Star murder Wars. you in cold blood if you decided to go astray from the original story of a, a set franchise. Oh no, he loves <laughs> anything Star Wars, with the exception of Jar Jar Binks. So that's an ongoing thing where we'll torment him with Jar Jar memes and stuff. And <laughs> he has on occasion left chats for brief periods because we wouldn't stop with the Jar Jar shit. Um, uh, Jar Jar Binks. I think you know. I do can. Was, pressed for an opinion he would even say that there's good elements to it but yeah just yeah uh, i would say that out of all of the movies jar jar makes it the uh the worst of the uh 10 that are out currently um <laughs> although i actually have to say that i actually kind of liked him as like one of the higher ups um um in the star wars council um Somewhat, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why talk about Star Wars anymore. <laughs> no, it's all right. So, well, anybody <laughs> else have anything else to say on this particular item? Um, I think, in the interest of like just completionism, I will be. I don't even know if that's a word, but mm-hmm. I'm definitely going to get a copy of that that Blu-ray or whatever that you guys have just to have it. Yeah, I found one for ten dollars on Blu-ray. Uh, Blu-ray. Oh, yeah, they're not expensive. At yeah. that price, it's worth it just to subject other people to it. So, I will say this: that copy, and for those of you listening, it is. It actually says the fortieth anniversary, so it was released in uh, two thousand eighteen, mm-hmm. and they chalked that thing full of extras, and mm-hmm. it is kind of the the, the uh, menus are kind of wonky. Yeah. It does have some fun sequences, like the the sequence at the beginning of the first disc with Darth Vader just going around and wrecking stuff uh, on Christmas mm-hmm. uh, is hilarious. And the little Lego Star Wars uh, yeah. shorts that they did on the second disc, uh, it really was funny. also funny. So cool it had a lot of fun effort stuff into like even putting the extras in it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, bud. No, I mean, I, I mean, I think that would be the way of doing it. Uh, I mean, out of all things, if you got to own it, I mean, that's about as official as you're going to get. <laughs> so does it, does it not include the part where they, they let you know that they canceled Incredible Hulk or Wonder Woman? Oh, no, it? it announces that at the beginning. <laughs> oh, thank God, because that is just so, <laughs> such delicious torment. So, like, Actually, no, one thing I saw that was fun was one of the people that plays one of the Imperial officers 
this was like their second ever credited role. I think it was their first credited role. And their next credited role was on The Incredible Hulk. So it's like... That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. But uh, yeah. Yeah, well, the way guess... Star Wars had their moments. That was, that was kind of interesting. Especially the Darth Vader versus Santa stuff. Yes, that was just the Darth fun. Vader versus Santa, yes. Uh, so... I guess we'll go ahead and uh, start our end uh, roles. So I guess we'll start with you, Mosley. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your channel. Uh, well, I am Mosley, and I on occasion review horror movies and do some gaming content, not as much as other people, but I've been known to update you guys on my Game Boy collection on occasion. And do the odd review. So you guys want to see that shit? Come over to Drunken Master Studios. I haven't done anything in the last couple of weeks, but I got some stuff coming out. And I have also been known to do brief segments for Rebel Gaming Club. Which, if you just want good variety pickup videos and high jinks, you should be subscribed to on YouTube as well. Those guys kick ass. Oh That's heck yeah! <laughs> uh, so Jake. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Jake. I uh, live here in Central Virginia, where I am a uh, big-time fan, collector, what have you, of uh, all sorts of media, movies, TV shows, music, comics, what have you, all kinds of good stuff. And... <laughs> I frequently guest on uh, Random's channel, Septum Sin vs. the World, uh, where we have uh, a very exciting pickups video this week. I had a lot of fun with that one. Um, and we also had a guest appearance from Grumpy Cat on our uh, preview video, so we can yes. look forward to that. Uh, <laughs> and um, generally, we have good time. You know, we do pickups and previews and... Uh, I'll let him go into more detail on that. I have my own YouTube channel, the Code Bookie Jake. Very, 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 very poorly updated, but it, it, it has some nice nature videos. So check them out <laughs> if you've got a few minutes or a half hour to kill. Uh, and other than that, um, just trying to survive the Christmas tree season. <laughs> <laughs> Almost over. <laughs> Almost. Uh, much sooner than it should be, actually. Uh, it should be a relief. Well, okay. uh, I am Septim Sen of Septim Sen versus the World. Uh, of course, we are a channel that loves the physical media. We uh, talk about collecting the physical media. And as we are preparing for the Copa Rundown, uh, we are not a channel for children. Uh, under the age of 13 and I will keep talking about that until uh, until our channel is probably shut down by the FTC um, we are a panel that talks about uh, of course all those collection with pickup videos new release videos, reviews matter of fact um, we have one in particular coming out this Friday on the movie Closing Time uh, which is going to be pretty awesome it's hard to find information on this movie anywhere else on the web, so it's kind of good to have another review out there of this. I was quite happy to have found it. Uh, and we have uh, then we start our holiday season of reviews. I'll have a few of those up where we where I talk about some lesser known Christmas movies, with the first review I do of "She Was So Pretty." Uh, be good for goodness sake the sequel to one that we've covered actually here on this show of course i also have a few other things going on uh a movie and i'm sure dave will talk a little bit more about this as well mm -hmm. uh that uh, i have a uh, production credit in it has been released last week uh, which is the uh eighth camp blood movie installment as the previous eighth camp blood movie installment was relegated to side story status and uh there's an excellent box set also still out and about so if you want your copy of this limited camp blood box set which 
has supposedly all of the movies except for End to the Woods. And, um, and, uh, and Camp Blood and Camp Blood 1, believe it or not. Oh. Well, he says there's 10 films in there, so I have mm. to wonder yeah. what the other two would be that are missing. So I'm guessing that Camp Blood and Camp Blood 2 aren't in there, are in there because he has still has the rights to those two okay. and has not disowned them. So, but we will see, and, and I'm sure I will do a video once I get a copy of it myself to uh, unbox and see what's in it, because there's supposed to be 10 films in there. And uh, which it's include... Blu-ray Blu and 4K Blu-ray, if, yes. if, if, if I understand correctly, uh, for those with of you into the 4K crap. With all the new artwork, which is cool. So in two of those films that I am actually featured on, uh, as far as in the credits are in there because Camp Blood Kills, I'm in uh, special thanks and mention, and I will be a producer credit in Camp Blood 8. Uh, finally, of course, I am on uh, Inside Movies Galore as a uh, periodic reviewer, and occasionally we go on to do a few of these things on our own. We had one last week of uh, Thanks Killing 3, uh, which was a uh, indeed fun so if you haven't heard that one you should definitely go back for that discussion and later this month we intend on doing a kind of uh martial arts mix up with fantasy mission force and uh the uh what was it fortress of the flying what was it the flying guillotine i can't remember the uh, master of the flying, master of the flying guillotine. guillotine so uh stuff to look forward to i also <laughs> run the uh the last but not least as i run the uh, schedule. Uh, so I will end this with saying our next film up next week is the wondrous film uh, Santa's Slay. I just a, that recently. A very warm and genteel view of Christmas. Perfect for everyone in your family. I will be picking up a real copy this weekend, but I do have a copy of it uh, for those who want to uh, or Very don't good. have a copy of it, uh, of it. I will be uploading it either tonight or tomorrow for the, uh, those of uh, us who want to watch it because uh, we will be watching it separately from each other and going on about it next week. If, uh, As far as I'm concerned, if Santa with Muscles can get a Blu-ray release this year, this particular film, which is a classic, should get a release on Blu-ray. <laughs> and with that note, I'm going to hand this back to Dave, uh, who can finish us off with all of his grand accomplishments. <laughs> thank you, Brandon. And uh, 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 thank you, folks, for listening to our uh, Star Wars holiday uh, special episode. Um, uh, my name is David Stregge. I am Delusions of Grandeur. And uh, I uh, do... Uh, I guess I do uh, uh, video re uh, 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 video reviews or just regular reviews of many different films, and uh, I also um, do some collection uh, 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 videos uh, from time to time, which I, I still have a few of the, uh, those coming up. Uh, just have been backlogged a little, a, a little, a little bit, but I've been uh, uh, every. Monday going on with a friend of mine, uh, which I shall just call Boris, uh, as uh, it, he is a character in Dark Zone 13 that loves to talk about uh, uh, films, and so do I. So uh, so we've been journeying forth since he is all the way in Croatia uh, and uh, been having some fun times talking with uh, with him. One of these days, we got to break Mo from his curse My and uh, get him <laughs> and get him on with us one of these uh, one of these days. But uh, uh, I'm sure that'll happen in the f uh, future sometime. So. Oh yeah, weirdly, I did one with <laughs> Boris by myself one day. Really? But, but yeah, we just got on and like shot the shit. But you should Monday. just you should just do that um, or, or whatnot and have your own film journeys or some shit. Yeah, shit. I want to go with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
you're more than welcome to come with us, but every time. I know. <laughs> Sleeping on the couch, waking up all fucking cotton mouth. They call shit. <laughs> but anyways, um, next week also, um, we are going to tackle uh, Mo and I. Uh, we are going to continue our Flesh Gordon journey and uh, do, do Flesh Gordon meets the Cosmic Cheerleaders uh, as a pre-show. Um, <laughs> as a pre-show. Uh, uh, and uh, I figured uh, if he's game, and uh, I probably will have nothing to do that following week, we can just go ahead and tackle Flesh, Flash Gordon, the movie, afterwards. Oh, just, just, oh. just to we recap got, on it. Y'all have to let me in on that one. Uh, <laughs> that's the one with the Queen soundtrack. I got to get on on that. Well, you're more than, <laughs> uh, well, Brandon, you're more than welcome to join us on the second one to, uh, to tell us your thoughts <laughs> on the first and second one next week. Well, and you know what? As far as the Flash Gordon shit goes, I can even drop a little review for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred game on here when we do that because I am fairly, you know, skilled at it. I'm regularly known to break the, a couple hundred. Uh, eh? The only yeah. reason why uh, I want to do, uh, do that one is because uh, uh, it, it pretty much is spoofing the uh, uh, that. Uh, film and the franchise and whatnot. So, yeah, so might as well. I mean, it's a shame <laughs> that we didn't get a bunch more flesh, Gordon. Though I need that. <laughs> Alrighty. So, in any case, folks, uh, definitely look out for that. Uh, that shit. I'm going to be going on on about another. Uh, 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 well, I'm going to be finishing my American horror project uh, series of, uh, of films. Hopefully, eventually. And uh, I've got a, a review that I'm still got to get to uh, uh, on a on a sequel to an independent film called Death Toilet. And it's uh, going to be Death Toilet too. Shit, full circle. Uh, there was a Death <laughs> Toilet <and> Flesh Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, uh, stay tuned, folks, for some more exciting shit uh, uh, coming this uh, uh, holiday. Uh, as we are, continue our winter experience. And uh, thanks for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. And uh, don't touch that dial unless you want to. Happy life, <laughs> <day>, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right.